I have had a lot of long, sleepless nights this past week trying to put this project together. What is this project? It's called Titus Pie, real original, and it is a gaming system. It is a desktop replacement. It is even a box you can use for a remote speakers if you want to hook it up somewhere. I took all the wonderful greatness of the Raspberry Pi projects and the genius of many people and combined them all into one distribution for you. And I've even made a little GitHub project over this. Now, with that said, I want to showcase this because there's a lot of moving pieces to it, but I want you to take a look at what it feels like, what it looks like. All these things are really important to me as I don't think any other Raspberry Pi distribution really looked or felt all that complete. And it's not something I could use as a desktop replacement, which I achieved with this project. So let's get on the desktop, get into it because I absolutely love this project. This right here is my desktop. You've seen it in every single video. I've had about seven different workspaces that you can flip between. And this is a tiling window manager that I use on every single Linux install I've ever done. So why not have that in a Raspberry Pi? I've done this in a very fashionable way where you can just type the Windows key in F1. This gives you a little cheat sheet. This was here when I forked this project, but I've added to it. You'll notice the launcher has a couple extra things for this version. First off, gaming or retro gaming using RetroPie, where we can utilize Steam. We could game stream using Moonlight and NVIDIA's game streaming service. We could also use it for retro games, so Super Nintendo ROMs and those types of things. And we'll test all that out here in a second. We can also use it to switch and multitask on our desktop environment, which I'm about to demonstrate. And then you have terminal, you have browser, you have just all the things. It's amazing. All on this little tiny $50 computer. So how's it run? Pretty darn well. Let's get right into it on the very... The, the little vial here, this is usually where I'm doing any kind of coding. So if you're a coder or you want to do any text file editing, you can put this in here. I went ahead and added a ARM version of VS Code right into this install and bundled that in so we can launch into this. I actually worked on this machine for about a whole week while this uh, did all my modifications to it on the machine. So I didn't wasn't using some other machine to modify or SSH in and do things. I was actually on the machine making these modifications using VS Code. And you can see all the different modifications I've made. And if there's something that you really want to see on here, we'll get in here, modify it to your needs. The beauty of this is you can break in without wiping out your main desktop and start tinkering around and work how I work and then improve upon that so you work better than me, which is great. Moving on to audio, I'm gonna just flip over to this one. I have a couple different things. For the music player, I went with Audacious and then I went ahead and added a couple songs uh, from Harris Heller, which is all copyright free. Go check him out. He actually has a YouTube channel called Alpha Gaming. Fantastic, great little background music. And I can play a little bit of that, jam out a little bit, which is pretty darn good. But on top of this, there's something called Raz Spotify. And what this does is it's a Raspberry Pi and it utilizes this Raspberry Pi. And as you plug in your speakers into the 3.55 millimeter jack or the 3.5 millimeter jack, you can actually connect through via your smartphone to here on your network as long as both are connected to the same network and play your music through those speakers that are connected up to the Raspberry Pi. So this works as a remote that comes default and it broadcasts by default as well. So load up your smartphone, broadcast your Spotify directly to this Raspberry Pi as well, or just use the built-in music player. Moving on to the other desktop, which is folder. And as I'm doing this, you don't necessarily have to isolate these things to this specific desktop. Like we could pull up terminal, we could pull up our browser. 
and launch all of this into one desktop and then push them to different workspaces. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to actually come back to the terminal. We're going to put that in the second tab. So I'm going to hold Windows key, shift, and press two. That'll shove it over there. And then we'll, we'll actually load up Chromium too. We'll put Windows key, shift, one when we get to that tab. And this is just basic file explorer. This is actually a little bit modified version of Nautilus. A couple things I've changed out of the gate that I like personally is not having the fancy location. I like to just show the entire path of wherever I'm at on my computer through this browser so I can easily type in like a hidden folder and get into that without actually doing it. Or let's say I'm back on my home. You can actually hold control and press H to show all those hidden files and, and browse that way. I just like seeing the full path name at the top. Just a little minor tweak I made in Decomp Editor. Moving over to the terminal, you can see I added a little bit of my own flair. Now I've made this whole video and I'll link it up above about beautifying my prompt. I actually did it on Mac and uh, Linux at the same time, which you can do this in Windows as well using, you know, Windows subsystem for Linux. But for this one, I actually had opacity. I turned that on. Disabling the compositor on this, which is called Compton, you could remove the opacity and maybe pick up a little bit in performance, but I did want to sacrifice the look of the system to get that extra performance. So I went ahead and left it in here. And you'll notice the prompt is pretty basic, but it follows everything. And you can easily get into any project you want in here. So if we pull into ZSH, you can see like the GitHub project and the branches. It has all those fun tweaks I've made. So when you're living in Terminal, this is a great way to learn Terminal, but also have a really good aesthetic right out of the box. Coming into the browser tab, we are using Chromium. Chromium is the de facto standard. It's what most people use. I don't really use it anymore. I use Brave, but Brave doesn't even have an ARM-based version of the browser. And that's kind of one of the shortcomings of this little box is it's ARM-based, which means the programs have to be compiled for ARM. Otherwise, they won't work. That's why I have Chromium on here by default as it's pretty good. Firefox also has a, a, a branch as well. But I did add one plugin over here called H. 264 IFY. This helps smooth out some of the video and just makes life a little bit easier when browsing the web and playing video through it. Still not great. One of the big improvements of 5.10 on the Linux kernel is some improvements to the graphics chip in the Raspberry Pi. So I'm really curious to see how that does here in the future. Now, I've purposely saved the best for last, and that is gaming. This is something I wanted to integrate RetroPie into, but if you're not familiar, RetroPie doesn't like to be run inside of desktop environments or, or really any environment other than console, or otherwise known as TTY. So every guide out there says press Control-Alt-F1 to get into the console and blah, 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 blah. It's terrible. I made my own custom script, so if you hold Windows key and G, it'll auto launch in. Or if you hold Alt space, you can just type games, and it'll also launch into Emulation Station. Now you saw that little trickery there. I actually did all the switching in the back end. You didn't even notice it. It happens with a blink of an eye. But I thought I'd, I'd mention that real fast. And then we have the traditional games here. I only have Super Nintendo on here right now, and I'm going to wipe this out for the image afterwards as that image, I can't put any copyright content, which this is copyrighted. I'll go ahead and launch into Final Fantasy III for a brief second, but I really want to show you the game streaming on Modern Warfare as that one is really the one that is truly amazing. Oh, Final Fantasy III. I show this in almost all my videos, and you're probably sick of it by now if you've been following me. Oh, but the, the nostalgia. Oh, the nostalgia of Final Fantasy III. I love it. Oh, so good. So good. Ugh. All right. We're going to quit out. I have my little Super Nintendo controller. I can play that later. Let's get into what people probably want, and that would be old modern warfare. Let's uh, flip over to Moonlight. You'll see all the games I've, I've put them in here. And I'll show the scripts afterwards of how I modified Moonlight to do all this. But it's really nice just to get in here and just type in whatever I want. So we're going to come down to modern warfare 
and launch right into it. This is actually streaming from my other machine, and I've made the video on how Moonlight works, and I'll put it up in the, in the top portion of the cards as well. So here we go, launching into Moonlight. You'll see everything's done from console. Now it's as if we're on here. We're doing this at 1080p, 60 frames per second. I'll go ahead and launch it. And this is a little bit, the actual host machine I'm using to stream Modern Warfare is only a 2400G, so load times aren't the best, but that's because that machine needs an upgrade, which Zen 3's coming out. That might happen. Here we go. So Modern Warfare, check the frames per second, latency, and packet loss I have in the top left there. We're going to do a little multiplayer action. What better way to test this out? And we'll just do a quick play here. All right, here we go. You can see on the host machine, we're getting 70 to 80 frames per second. So pretty good. And pretty smooth on my end through the pie. Let's see if we can get a kill real fast. Oh, long shot. Got him. <laughs> Headshot. Teabag. Oh, you got teabagged by somebody playing on a Raspberry Pi. That's got to feel bad. Well, all right, six kills on a Raspberry Pi. Hey, I'll take it. All right, and then I, I use just Control Shift and Alt and then Q to quit. As soon as it quits, it comes right back into Moonlight, and then I can simply go into my Start menu. And how I've set my script up, as soon as I quit out of here, obviously you'd want to quit. If you restart or shut down, it will shut down or restart the system. It'll re redirect it to the main GUI and push you right back into your environment. So it's almost as if it's launching inside of it, but it's really not. It's launching right into console. And that little tidbit of gaming took me almost a day to figure out and really tinker with to get exactly right. Now, other things I didn't talk about right here, as far as Discord clients goes, I will notice that Discord doesn't have an ARM version on Linux, so you would need to run Discord through your browser if you're going to be utilizing that. And then we also have in Terminal, I want to show you the specs there as well, just to kind of show you where it's been up. It's been up for a little over an hour. We're utilizing a little over 400 megs of running memory. When it switches over to Emulation Station, not a problem with that at all when it comes to the memory. Packages, you'll notice it's a little bit heavy because I installed a lot of packages as I wanted to be as noob friendly as possible and have everything preloaded that you would want on a Raspberry Pi. I hope everyone enjoys this. I do give two options for this. And the first one is obviously the Titus Pi GitHub. You can go on there, get it, install it, configure it yourself. I'm making this entire theme, material theme through Awesome and showcasing all the packages I install on the Pi through the actual Titus Pi project. So you can emulate this. Also, I have a Raspberry Pi 3 version that I will put an image on my website that uses the Arch-based version. This is actually using Raspbian OS, which is based on Debian, but I also made an ARM version for the old Raspberry Pi 3s because this is a 3. I actually have a 4 back there. But the, the three version, I went ahead and stripped it out. That one only has 400 packages and is absolutely bare bones, completely awesome. I'd show it here, but this video is already a little bit too long. And I might make another video depending on how this one does. But if you want the full pre preloaded binary image, it is several gigs. I'm hosting that over on portal.christitis.com for $5. Or if you just want to say thank you, you can head over there and download that image that way. Otherwise, you can always do the freeway, build it yourself. I really encourage that. And when it comes to the Pi, I just wanted to showcase you a different way of utilizing it as a desktop replacement, as a second gaming box to where you can just be sitting on your couch playing Call of Duty if you want. All these things 
I wanted to pour into this and make it as awesome as possible. So please let me know your feedback down below in the comment section as I worked a long time on this just to get it just right. And any problems you all have, just let me know in the comments as well. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.